So today we're looking at a brown paper planning session. I've used this hundreds of times and it never fails to add huge amounts of value and bring loads of clarity to a project or an organization strategy, any kind of plan, anything that involves a bunch of people needing to agree amongst themselves what it is that they need to do to achieve an aim. So the brown paper planning session it starts with some brown paper. So as you can see, here is our fine brown paper uh, on, on our wall here. Um, you don't, of course, have to use brown paper. You can do it with a whiteboard, um, although a challenge if it's a whiteboard because of very fixed edges, they're normally not that big. The best, of course, is if you've got whiteboard walls in your, in your uh, facilitated space, so you can just keep writing along the wall. You can do this online brilliantly as well. It works fantastically well with Mural and Miro, so, and that really will be to your advantage as you'll see in a moment when we start to add the dates and the activities to this timeline. So where you're gonna start with all of this is understanding the project aim and making sure your participants are know why they're in the room and probably the project team or the strategy team or whatever it is you're focusing on. Uh, start with the, the aim of the project or the vision, what is it you're trying to do um, and make sure that the team are clear about all of that right at the start. So a project planning session is a brilliant way of clarifying the work, the project, the steps needed to deliver your project with the team that are then going to deliver it. It's a brilliant way of demystifying and getting real clarity around the whole team about what needs to happen and when and in what order and where the dependencies are and all of that stuff. So it's a great session, really high value for bringing a team together around an aim or objective. So the first thing to do once you've clarified your project aim, which is why you're in the room in the first place, is to have a conversation about the work streams, the things, the activities that need to happen to deliver your project. So for example, if we took I don't know, a school joining a multi-academy trust. So here in the UK, there's a big push for all schools to join uh, a part of a group of schools so that they can work together on a whole bunch of things, curriculum, sharing their back office staff, leadership and culture, etc. So if you're a school and you're joining a multi-academy trust, there's a whole bunch of things you need to think about and you'll need to get done for your project. So that might begin with staffing, the curriculum, the culture and ethos in your school, governance, a whole range of things that become work streams in our project plan. So let's start getting that up on the wall now. So the first thing you'll need is a timeline to work with. So this is where you're guaranteed to get it wrong the first time, but don't worry about it. So across the top of my brown paper, I want to add the months. If it's a year long project, let's assume it's a probably a year long project for this sake. Uh, so I'm gonna add the months across the top. Now here's the first thing, all planning is always clearer over the short term. So give yourself more space through the first few months and then as you get towards the end of your timeline, you can probably squash things in a bit because there's just inevitably less known about that end of your project. So there's our timeline now on the wall and on our, on our chart, and now we can begin our session. So the work streams we said, let's just pick some up. So we said there was gonna be something on governance. So I'm gonna just write that down here. You might wanna start this on a separate area or indeed on post-its because things might move around before you really get into the planning session. The most important part in any of this though is to just get started. Get some stuff on your, on your brown paper so that you've got some anchor points to work with. So for this sake, we're gonna say governance, we're gonna say curriculum, if I can spell curriculum, uh, I don't know, uh, buildings making this up as I go along. Let's just stick with those three for the purposes of this. So there may be a whole range of work streams that you need to think about. Now it's really, really helpful at the very start of your planning session is to think about what are those anchor points that are fixed in time. So there may be some dates or an end point that you know about straight away. So it's quite helpful to get that up as a focus for everybody. So let's say that we wanna have our school 
in our new multi academy trust and working from September. That's a correct. That's the academic year in the UK. So from September, we want to have it ready to go. So we can put that up straight away. Here's September, and I would put just a milestone. So diamonds represent milestones in project management. There we go. And you might want to write on there. So I don't know. Uh, Matt multi academy trust uh, commences. Okay, so really rather straightforward from here. What you're going to do is for each of the work streams, ask the group, because remember in all facilitation, the group is the expert. What are the tasks that need to happen? Now there's two ways into this. Quite often people will be able to tell you in the order things need to happen. That's kind of how your brain tends to work in planning. So that's a great start because you can immediately start putting your post-its up on here. So for example, in governance, we might want to start with, I don't know, uh, some sort of view of what's happening right now in government. So let's call that a, what should we call it? A current analysis. Sounds very impressive, doesn't it? A current analysis. So that's the first thing that needs to happen. Now here's the question that I would immediately ask. If that's the first task, then I'd be wanting to ask, how long is that likely to take? Is that something that we can do now, today? Have we got all the information here? And I'm looking to the group to answer the question. Or is this something that we've never done before uh, and we're going to need to gather some information, talk to lots of people and pull lots of stuff together in order to get a current analysis of our governance in, in this example. So we'll have a bit of a conversation around the room um, and you can either, like here, use a milestone date. So the, the post-it here is sort of a milestone. Here we're saying kind of end of Feb, end of February. We might want to say that that's doable. Uh, or you can put a whole duration in and just put a, an activity bar and write current analysis. So there we go, we've got a bit of an idea of what's happening. So your first thing you'll notice in this is we are not detailed project planning here. This is more strategic level project planning, uh, which is a useful thing to do with the team as a whole. After one of these sessions, you will want to go away and get the teams to spend a bit more time really thinking through some of this stuff. And there's the first tip for all workshops. Quite often workshops will be very optimistic about what's possible. And, and the timeframes within which it's possible. So it's definitely worth some cold reflection afterwards before you kind of commit this timeline to the project plan as a, as a kind of baseline project plan that you're going to manage people to. So this is our starting point. Current analysis, we said, I don't know, what's next in governance? Perhaps there's then something on options. So looking at what are the options that we need to consider. So options appraisal, let's call that, if I can spell. Um, and then you might move after options appraisal into making a decision or some sort of decision process. So why don't we put that up there now as our decision time. So we put up the decision, uh, decision milestone here. So what we're saying here is for governance, there's a period of time we're going to be looking at a current analysis of what's going on now or the, and gathering our options together in an options appraisal. And then we're going to get to a decision point and we're saying by end of April around there is when we need to do that. So that would have meant that we've had a good conversation in the room with the team that's going to deliver this. We've talked about, in this case, the governance work stream, got some information, some ideas from people. Um, and importantly, now, even if you're not involved in the governance work stream, you have some awareness that this is going to be happening uh, and that you need to be cognizant of that or know when it's going to be decided or whatever. So after you've done that and we've just rushed through so they'll be, probably take you 20 or 30 minutes to get, do something like that really um, and you might want to press into more detail. Are we sure that we've got the information? Are we sure about those time, time frames? Um, just make sure everyone's really clear about what they need to do. You want to think about who is responsible for that. So everything changes in a planning session once you put someone's name against it. It's a really good way of anchoring people in reality and stopping people dreaming all kinds of impossible and difficult tasks for people to do once it's your name that's on there. So let's put me down to do the governance work stream. So that means I'm now going to be, know that I'm doing that in the room. I can use my colleagues in the room to help me think through what's required to do it but it's going to be likely anchored a bit more in, in sensible, uh, doable activities if I know I'm the one that's going to take this away and do it later.
So then we repeat that for all of the work streams. And this is where it starts to get really interesting. When you begin, it's very straightforward and simple, isn't it? We've set out a time frame for a standalone work stream. The next one on here we said was curriculum. So I'm not gonna go through all of the detail. You get the idea. There we are dropping post-it notes on the floor. But for the curriculum area, Oh, there's a tip for post-its, by the way. If, when you're using them on here, if you tear them sideways, it doesn't bend them upwards, so they stick, they sit better and flatter on the wall. There you go, who knew? Um, so for the curriculum work stream, it might be that you can't conclude your curriculum until you've sorted out your governance. So this is a dependency. So we might well have our end of our curriculum is a decision on governance, and at that stage, you can then review the curriculum, don't worry about your writing, by the way, as you can see, my writing's terrible. As long as you're writing clearly that people can just about see, most people remember what you wrote anyway. So here we've got our decision on governance, and then what we're gonna say is there's a dependency to review the curriculum and then potentially make a decision on curriculum. Let's say by June, we've got our decision on a curriculum for our new school as part of our MAT. One of the challenges that often comes up when you're in planning sessions is how long is something gonna take, particularly if it's a new activity, a new task that the team haven't done before. So there's some relatively simple approaches to that if you can't define it precisely. So firstly is to ask what's the worst case? You begin there. What's the worst case if everything went wrong, if you couldn't get hold of people, if you couldn't find the information? And most people can then come up with something, you know, I don't know, three weeks, four weeks. Um, and then the second part of that, of course, is what is the best case? What do we think is uh, achievable if everything was available to you immediately? So and that might get you a couple of days. Uh, and then usefully just pick something in the middle. For the purposes of this kind of level of planning, that's perfectly fine and will serve your purposes. So sometimes it's not clear the order things need to be done in. So there's a relatively simple process that you can follow to solve that problem, which is once you've got your work streams identified, so the group have told you all the things need to happen, is you can move to brainstorm style. What are the things we need to do in governance in, the, in our example that we're using here? So under the governance work stream, what's the stuff we need to get done? Well, we need to arrange this. We need to look at that. We need to talk to these people. You don't need to necessarily have it in an order initially. You can write that up on a flip chart and then you can begin to look at which is the right order after you know the full set of tasks. So the other thing with project planning is just doing it on milestones alone can be dangerous. This approach is designed to set out at a high level a clear picture for the whole team of the project plan. So it takes away ambiguity about what needs to happen and when, but it isn't detailed project planning. What you should be doing in detailed project planning is letting the duration of the task, what does that mean? Well, how long is the thing gonna take? Uh, how much effort and days is it gonna require to get done? You should let those build up to your milestone date. So your milestone date is dictated by the length of the tasks that will uh, deliver that milestone, not just set in stone and pulled out of thin air. It's a dangerous way to plan because it means that it's a bit lazy in its thinking. You haven't really thought through the things that need to happen or the time that they're going to take, and that's why projects get delayed. So there we are, brown paper project planning for you. So you start with your brown paper or your whiteboard, give yourself a time frame across the top, Work out with the group what are the work streams that are going to need, need to be done for this project and then get the group telling you what needs to happen under each of those work streams. This is where you remember you, the power of the facilitator is that the group is the expert. So they're going to bring the content, you're going to guide the process. So they need to tell you what needs to happen, how long it's going to take, who's best to do it, who needs to be involved. Your job is to keep guiding them, keep pressing them and keep focused on each of those work streams until they're done before you move to the next one. If you liked this video and you want more of this kind of content, please like the video and please subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out. and We're really keen to keep delivering great content. And let us know if you want some specific sessions added. We can cover all kinds of great sessions. We've done many hundreds of them through the years. So please like and subscribe and add a comment if you want us to look at your challenge. So the first thing we're going to need is some brown paper and here it is.